Hello and a warm welcome along to Sports Bet TV with me, Paul Alster, here with you with my selections for Boxing Day and Monday, the 27th of December. But before all of that, let me wish you all a very, very Merry Christmas. I hope you have a great day, all being well uh, with the family. And of course, we're looking forward to some truly outstanding racing across uh, Britain and Ireland. Boxing Day alone, 11 meetings to try and figure out. And I've done my best to um, come up with some selections, three selections on Boxing Day and three selections as well on Monday the 27th. If you're joining me for the first time, please press the subscribe button. A big thank you as well to those of you that have taken a look at my top 10 hits video, uh, in which I pointed out my 10, among the 10 biggest priced horses that I tipped during 2021, uh, a year that has seen me uh, show a profit of uh, very nearly £1,670 to uh, level £10 each way stake. So once again, another very profitable year for followers of this service. Well, um, we point out regularly that you go through periods of being red hot and then you go through a quiet period. And to be honest, the final quarter of this year has been pretty quiet. We nearly um, got back on track last Saturday with one more for the road going very close indeed at a good odds over at Ascot. I hope you're on that one each way. Uh, but looking forward to um, our uh, Christmas selections here, and I'll get straight on with it because there's a lot to get through. And as I mentioned, there are three selections on Boxing Day, and here's the first of them. And it's at my local track at Weatherby. Um, it is in the 135 race, a two and a half mile novices handicap hurdle, and not an easy start. There are 16 runners here. They wouldn't be the highest rated horses. It's a modest contest for horses up to 110, so only an ordinary level. Looks like they may make uh, John Quinn's run a well educated favourite here at around the nine to two mark. He was third in a maiden hurdle at Newcastle uh, last time, and he makes his handicap bow of just 108. Um, there's a horse called JT for Ian Williams, who was second in a, uh, a novices hurdle uh, at uh, Warwick last time out, a handicap hurdle, he's gone up two pounds. And I know that it's William Kennedy, um, the jockey's only ride of the day, so a long way to go if he's gonna get beaten on that one, but I hope he does. Um, the Skeletons have a horse called Jersey, who's making its handicap bow of just uh, 104. And David Pipe has a horse called Doyen La Lut of 109, who's another one worth noting if there's any uh, market moves. So do note those. But the choice here is actually the top weight. And it's a horse called Cafe Pushkin. Uh, it's trained by Nigel Twist and Davis and ridden by his son, Sam. And I think this is a fascinating runner, really. Um, three runs last year. A very promising debut for Cafe Pushkin. He was forced to the decent Jeremy's Pass at Wink Canton. That was in November last year, just beaten 12 lengths on debut. Then he disappointed at both Utoxter in December and Warwick in February. And what were pretty fair races, to be, to be fair. Now, they put the horse away after that. I think, reading between the lines, um, the horse probably needed more time. He's shown that promise on his initial run and then maybe just got over face with three fairly quick runs. Um, he's been off for over 11 months, uh, over 10 months, I should say, 10 and a half months. And he's introduced here off top weight. Now, Nigel Twist and Davis could have, I'm sure, run him in all sorts of races, at all sorts of places. But I think the fact that he asked him to carry top weight in this company suggests that they think the mark is very fair. And I think that's worth noting, 110. And he does look the type that can do better this term. So first time in a handicap, uh, top weight, but it might not be enough to stop Cafe Pushkin, who did run his best race on his debut last season. And the odds on offer at the time of this recording, uh, which is on Christmas Eve, um, just before noon, uh, 14 to one each way with Skybet for six places. Uh, most of the others, Quite a few offer 14 to 1 as well, but only five places. So a good each way bet, I think, 14 to 1 uh, with Cafe Pushkin. Nice, tasty odds to start the day. By the way, if you're interested in more tips for the uh, Boxing Day and the 27th 
of December. But at shorter rods, then uh, do check me out at FreeBetsCon, where I've been having a great time of things in recent months. Horses more towards the head of the market, including uh, my selection there for the King George VI chase at Kempton on Boxing Day. But moving on here at Sportsbet to my uh, second choice, and very often you'll find that with so many meetings on Boxing Day, horses can slip through the net, so to speak, with so many eyes focusing on the big meetings. Sometimes at the lesser meetings, there's a horse can be plotted up. And I'm always looking on showcase days for what's going on at, well, not the gaff traps, but, you know, the lesser traps. And there's one here that's caught my eye at Wincanton on Boxing Day in the 313. A two and a half mile handicap chase, 12 runners, good ground. They're betting around four to one the field and Emma Lavelle's ahead of the field, an ex-Irish horse uh, who um, won uh, last time out on its second run for the yard when uh, going in at Subble over two and a half miles, probably gonna go off favorite with a five pound rise in the weights. Uh, Emma's got quite a few runners across Britain uh, on Boxing Day and wouldn't surprise me if she did have a winner or two. Um, there's an up and coming trainer called Richard Bundy, who some of you may already have started to follow. He's got a horse called Corin Cross, who is not to be dismissed lightly after finishing second in its two most recent starts at Weatherby and Huntingdon. I shan't go through all the field. I'll just come straight to the point about the horse that I think is of interest here. It's called Mont Saint Vincent, uh, or Vincent. Um, uh, Neil Mulholland trains the horse and Ben Jones, a much underrated jockey, Ben Jones is going to be on board. Now he's a French bred horse, nicely bred for the jumps game, only a five year old and only had four runs. He was fourth on his debut in a Doncaster bumper in November of last year. Then he was fifth on his hurdles bow um, four or five months later in March back at Doncaster in a novice's hurdle. And with the benefit of that experience, he went down to South Wales to good old horse lass and he won a maiden hurdle in really good style over two and three quarter miles. So he has plenty of uh, stamina, this horse. He then went back to false lass, uh, ran respectably under his penalty, but maybe he'd had enough for his first season. Now, very interestingly, they go straight to chasing this season with this horse, but instead of going in a maiden chase or a novice chase, he's going straight into a handicap. Now that's it's, it's happening more. It used to be very unusual, but I know that a number of trainers are doing this now. And uh, Neil Mulholland has obviously felt that the horse is jumping well enough at home uh, to go in against handicappers first time out. And I think that's really fascinating. He's rated 117, which is a very workable mark. He's a big gray horse, really powerful sort, the type to make a chaser. So for me, more Saint Vincent, in the 313 at uh, Wincanton, he is 15 to two each way. And that is for four places with the likes of Bet Victor, Bet Fair and Paddy Power. So shop around as always, but Mont Saint Vincent, Wincanton 313 is my second selection on Boxing Day. And for my third selection on Boxing Day, I'm back at Weatherby. And the 320 race there is a two mile handicap hurdle. There are 11 runners. Uh, the going is forecast soft, as I mentioned earlier. Now, uh, Susan Corbett, uh, she has a horse that's likely to go off favourite here called War Verge, and he's on a hat-trick after winning at Newcastle and Kelso. He's gone up a total of £11 and is forecast at around 3-1. to one. Uh, Bally Breeze, trained by Sam Drinkwater, uh, was a fair fourth at Aintree uh, on its uh, later start in a novice's handicap. Um, I think that one's quite interesting. And there's another one called Killer Valor. I think that's how you pronounce it, for Adrian Keithley, who was third at Sedgefield on his handicap bow of 109. But there's one uh, here who I think could go well at a, a really decent price. And the horse in question is called Feel the Pinch. He's trained by Fergal O'Brien, who churns out the winners. And Max Kendrick, who does really well for the yard, is on board. Now, this horse... Um, has been sporadically raced over the last three seasons. He looked promising when winning a Utoxta maiden hurdle in June of 2019. He then was off for eight months and then came back to run just twice, both times at Ludlow, and he was second there in a novice's hurdle, giving away £15 to the eventual winner in February of 2020. 
Now, after that, again, they obviously had some issue with this horse. He was off for 22 months until reappearing at Cheltenham just a couple of weeks ago. And that was on December the 10th. He ran in a, a really decent handicap hurdle, um, won by Lively Citizen. He finished eventually 8th of 12. But I was watching the race and noted him shaping very well indeed for much of the race and only really uh, beginning to fade after the second last before the turn in uh, towards the home straight. And he gradually weakened, although I did note as they run through them on the line, he was still keeping on steadily in the closing stages. That suggested to me that Feel the Pinch still retains ability. Now he's still only a seven-year-old and uh, quite um, happily, he's been dropped four pounds since that run at Cheltenham. He's sure to be fitter because he did look a little bit uh, burly on his return after 22 months. You're always worried when a horse is off for a long time and then it has two fairly quick runs that it might what we call bounce. You know, run well, fairly well first time out, then maybe just not quite have recovered. But I'm happy to uh, go with Fergal O'Brien's judgment on this. And um, interestingly, Max Kendrick with an 18% strike rate when he rides for Fergal O'Brien. And O'Brien himself in handicap hurdles at Weatherby has a 22% strike rate. So that is very, very respectable. And at the time of this recording, Field the Pinch is 16 to 1 each way with the likes of Betfred. Um, Bet365 Sporting Index, Paddy Power and Bet Fair. So that is my third selection on Boxing Day. You know, do with them what you will, maybe uh, a patent or a Trixie or something like that. Or, of course, you can uh, completely ignore my selections and go with your own uh, choices. And it'll be much the same on Monday, uh, which, uh, of course, is the uh, 27th, the day after Boxing Day. I've got three for you here. Now, I was expecting they would have declared the horses. I'm still not quite understanding when they're meant to be declaring them, uh, all the horses for the Monday, because they kind of declared three days ahead for Boxing Day, but they don't seem to have done that so far uh, for the 27th. But the first of my selections is in the Welsh Grand National, which is, of course, at Chepstow. And I think it's due off at 2.50. Um, good to soft ground is being forecast at... Uh, so it's such a shame they're having to run it behind closed doors for the second year running. It's really hard luck for them, but obviously we understand the reasoning behind it. And this is a quite amazing renewal with four previous winners in the race. One of them is Native River, who of course won in 2016, then went on to win the Gold Cup in 2018. He's got top weight. Now, this is significant because what it means is that because he's such a highly rated horse, a lot of the horses are forced to run from out of the handicap and carry more than their actual hand handicap rating suggests. So quite a few horses are disadvantaged by the presence of Native River, who of course ran perfectly well when second. He was well beaten at the end to protect her out in the many clouds chase, but he's still a very fine racehorse. Now Secret Reprieve won this last year. It was run in January actually. So he has the opportunity to win two Welsh nationals in a year, which I'm not sure has ever been done before, probably not. Um, and he's gone up, uh, but only six pounds. He hasn't run, though, for um, 352 days, but he has gone well fresh in the past. I do feel this is a much stronger renewal than last year, but he's got a featherweight to carry, and he could easily go very close to winning again for Evan Williams. Now, the London National at Sandown was won by Paul Nichols Highland Hunter, he was very, very game in winning that. Uh, that was just three weeks ago. He's picked up a four pound penalty. He's got a nice racing weight of 10 stone nine. Hold that taut for uh, Venetia Williams, one at Carlisle, um, has gone up uh, seven pounds, uh, but he is wrong at the weights despite that, which kind of tempers my enthusiasm. And the Irish have an interesting raider trained by Peter Fahey, a trainer I do follow quite closely. The horse is called the Big Dog. He won over three and a half miles at Punchestown in their Grand National trial back in February. He's got another nice weight of 10 stone seven. The Scottish National winner is likely to run as well. Mighty Thunder for um, uh, Lucinda Russell. Um, Potter's Corner as well. There are so many horses. We still haven't had the final decks, which is a bit of a pain in the, uh, in the arse here. But what can you do? Anyway, the horse I'm going with here is a horse who's won it before and his name is Elegant Escape and is trained by Colin Tizard. No jockey booked, 
because uh, like uh, Native River, he's trained by Colin, they haven't chopped them up. I'm hoping that they're both going to run. And the reason why I hope Native River runs is because if he doesn't, then Elegant Escape is going to go up 10 pounds and become the top weight. So having Native River in is keeping Elegant Escape's weight down by 10 pounds. And I wonder if that's a deliberate move or not. I'm sure both horses are running on their merits, don't get me wrong. But it really does help the cause of Elegant Escape. He won this off 151, uh, beating Ramsey's the tie back in 2018. A horse could also run again uh, on Monday. He hasn't won since, but he's run some very good races since then. He was sixth in the Gold Cup. Uh, he was third in the 2019 in Hennessy behind the Russia counter. Um, uh, he was off for 21 months, had a setback, um, and didn't come back until December the 4th, where Colin ran him in a two-mile handicap hurdle, which is a, a, a sprint for this horse. You know, he really needs three, three and a half miles at least. And he ran okay at Sandown in a listed handicap hurdle, behind as you would expect, but staying on up the Sandown Hill to pass a few. And that should have put him spot on now. He'll have blown away all those cobwebs. And um, I think he's got a proper chance here. Uh, he is a, a classy horse who, thanks to the presence of his stable companion, uh, has a racing weight, which you know does give him a chance. And still a nine-year-old, each way is offered 20 to one each way, and many of them paying five places, and some I'm sure will eventually go six once the market really starts to uh, get going. So for me, elegant escape, let's hope he runs in the Welsh National on Monday, the 27th. And then uh, quickly onto my final two selections for the holiday period. Uh, take you across to Leopardstown on Monday, the 27th, the 255, 200,000 euros in the Paddy Power Handicap Chase. Uh, three miles, 28 runners. I don't half pick them, you know. Uh, make life hard for myself. They're betting seven to one the field. Uh, the likes of Gavin Cromwell's Alpha Mix. Uh, JP McManus owns this one. He was just beating her neck at Punchestown last time out. And Gordon Elliott's got a horse called the Bosses Oscar, who was second at third as over two and three quarter miles. He was also second, you'll recall, at the Cheltenham Festival in the Potemps Network Handicap Hurdle Final in March. So two interesting runners, and there's also, amongst a host of horses with chances, an old friend of this channel, a wave of the sea, who popped up at, I think, 16 to 1 for us in February in a big race um, for Joseph O'Brien. Well, he's uh, going to be taking his chance here as well, and it's not out of it. But my fancy here, and I do think he's going to run a massive race, or she is rather, it's a mare, eight-year-old mare called Augusta Gold, Trained by Willie Mullins, the great Willie, and Paul Towner, champion jockey of Ireland, will be on board. Now, this eight-year-old mare is rated 145. Um, she's been off for eight months, but she goes very well fresh, so that doesn't worry me at all, the fact that she's not had a run for a while. She won first time out last season. She won a grade three at Fairy House. She went on to finish uh, later on in the season, 11th in the Irish National, having travelled really well until running out of puff uh, from the second last over that uh, three miles five. This three mile trip is ideal for her. Now she doesn't stand a lot of racing. So maybe two, three, maximum four runs a year. Uh, she's one of four runners for Willie Mullins in the race. And it's significant, I think, that Paul Townend has uh, either chosen or been told he's gonna ride her. Um, not too many firms have priced up, including quite starkly, uh, Paddy Power themselves haven't priced up on their own race yet. So what can you say? Uh, 20 to 1, though, each way available with Bet365 at the time of this recording, last time I looked. Um, and I think that Augusta Gold is going to run a massive race in the €200,000 Paddy Power Handicap Chase on Monday, the 27th. And then on to my final choice. And again, let's hope it runs. Let's hope it's declared. Kempton 340 on Monday, two mile handicap hurdle, good ground. I don't know how many runners there'll be. It's a hot two mile handicap hurdle though. There are lots of improving horses here. Plenty of them last time out winners. Um, but there's a horse I followed last season and um, it's running here and I can't desert it because it's already shown form this term. The horse is called the Widowmaker and it's trained by Colin Tizard 
once again, good old Colin. And again, no jockey on this one. Um, this is a headstrong horse who is not easy to handle, but he has a lot of latent talent. And uh, last season, having run a bit wayward um, early on, but shown that ability, he went on to win twice at Taunton. And very significantly, this is a horse who I think has to go right-handed. Um, he had wind surgery in the summer to try and help his breathing. He reappeared at Wincanton recently, sent off a 25 to one shot, unconsidered, jumped out, went off like the clappers, made all the running, down towards the final flight where they started to close on him. And then his jockey had a quick look round, pressed the button, and away he went and pulled away from them again. I think this is a horse with a lot of ability, the widow maker. He's done up seven pounds for that, uh, but he may take some catching around Kempton if they let him uh, stride on. And I think he should be an each way prize because all the top yards have got horses in here with good form coming into it, the likes of Paul Nichols, Nicky Henderson, Dan Skelton, Fergal O'Brien, Brian, Nigel Twiston Davis, and others. And so my estimation, in the hope that it is that the widow maker will probably, assuming there's a field of 10 to 12 runners at least, probably go off around seven to one. So he's my each way selection at Kempton in the 340 on Monday, all being well, and that is the widow maker. So that is my last selection uh, for uh, this uh, holiday period, a total of six in all, give them all a good luck. And um, let's hope they give us a great run for our money. Now, just before I go, um, there's a lot of work gone into these bulletins over the co course of the year. We've been bringing you them every week and through the festivals. And I want to thank uh, Joseph Smith that uh, has uh, produced all these uh, videos and done great work uh, on a regular basis. And of course, uh, Robert Waterman of Knockout Entertainment who helps bring these uh, bulletins to you as well. A uh, real team effort. And let's hope that we can go on and uh, Sally forth into 2022 with plenty more winners as well. But for me, Paul Alster here at Sportsbet. Uh, once again, a very Merry Christmas, and I'll be back uh, New Year's Eve uh, with more uh, tips for you going into the new year. Bye-bye for now.